rank it in Tumaco now. Between the military dock and the commercial dock. There's quite the adventure coming in here. Talking to the traffic control. They <laughs> made us like re-anchor five times. Um, they gave us coordinates and then they said we're 400 meters away from our coordinates, which was kind of like not the truth. But anyways, we're here now and Minnow is parked between all the big boats. <laughs> And we're just getting rid of some trash. We do our paperwork, and um, our guests have left us, and most of them are safely back home. And uh, we just gotta get some water, some diesel, and some food, and then we're gonna head down further to Ecuador. Those boats that you see, they're drug running submarines. Well, half submarines because. As you can tell, the engine exhaust pipe has to stick out of the water, so they kind of like go seven eighths submerged, and then just the pipe for the exhaust is uh, above the water. These have obviously been confiscated, so they fill them up with um, cocaine, and then they try to run them up north, and some of them obviously have gotten caught. This one here has a little warning on it saying, <laughs> If you don't want somebody knowing what you're doing, then don't do it. Here you can see that's where the exhaust comes out. So most of it is under the water. Pretty scary job if you ask me. Okay, so we just talked to our agent who is like the most unnecessary person in the world. Since I'm doing most of the talking to anybody, everybody and he just sits there basically and he's getting $200 for that. It's just, I really don't know what that money is for and I'm a little angry, but you know, that's how it is. And now we're gonna jump on one of the blue buses here and apparently they do like a little um, circle through the city. We need some vegetables and maybe some juice and some fruit and we're actually looking for some burgers. <laughs> Stop of six minutes. So it's time to grab a little roadie. Buenas. Are you the boss? I'm not quite sure what the rules are here drinking in public, so let's see what he said about this. that there is a burger place here so and this restaurant here at Puente is one of the most famous places in whole Tumaco <laughs> it's got like four entries at TripAdvisor yeah <laughs> and the burger place has like zero what was it called the burger place yeah uh, colossal burger oh that sounds good it seems to be just down here I'm not so sure this uh, place actually exists, but we're giving it a try. Lots of, uh, lots of restaurants seem shut down. There it is, Colossal Burger. On the corner? Well, this looks better than hamburguesa. Thank 
with you, off crew boys, <laughs> for the tips. Cheerio <laughs> to you. <laughs> and your cold weather. <laughs> For once, the weather report is actually doing exactly what it said it was, well, the weather is doing what the weather report was saying it was going to do. So it was, uh, we, we were supposed to have a little bit more westerly winds closer to shore, about seven to eight knots, and then going further out, we would get more west northwesterlies, a little bit like nine to ten. So we did head out a little further offshore, and here they are, happy sailing. So Jana is a traditional sailboat, and as you can see, there is, for example, no winches here for the four sails. This is the cutter, and this is the outer jib. And then um, this is the only winch that there is on Joanna, except for the anchor windlass. Um, and this is for the preventer. Goes up to the boom here. Now, once you have tacked or jive or whatever, then it goes over to the other side. Um, well, so, yeah, I mean, she's a gaff rig, y'all. Got that one right, the captain is nodding. So she's a gaff rig, y'all. And uh, so we have here on the mast, we have, uh, this is the main halyard. And then this is to pick up the gap. So basically it's, it's easier with two people. One goes on here, one goes on here. And you have to make sure that you go up kind of like parallel with the gap like this. Same speed. And then the hail, main hail usually reaches the final point and then you have to take up the gap further all the way up. Yeah. So I just got told that the what I call the main halyard is a throat halyard because it's like where the gaff sits on the runner of the mast. And then the other one is the peak halyard, which is at the end of the gaff where it pulls up the end of the gaff. Righty ho, what else? Um, so very different to other boats maybe is that these, all these sheets are not really made up. They're all kind of loose which is as far as I remember having been told that in the old days these used to be made of manila. So if you have a lot of strength on them, if you actually make them up, it's really difficult to untie the lines under pressure. So Now, one thing that you have to do on a traditional boat like this is you really want to make sure that you don't get your hands into anything because there's so much pressure on everything. So there's no winches, obviously. Um, so always make sure to keep your your hand on top of stuff and never like around anything so when the pressure comes you don't tear off your hands. Oh yeah, as you can tell there's no winches on here either, nor here for the halyard of the, this is the outer jib. So what uh, we do is what's called sweating. Is that actually spelled the same way as sweating, like the sweat sweat? Not sure so we have to look that one up well you have to sweat the lines which uh, you can do either with one person or two which is easier with two but it also works with one person so basically you put your um, hand more or less at the same height of your body onto the rope like this and then you push it out with a little bit and then you pull it towards you with all your weight and you fall down and then you pull it downwards and then the other person takes up the slack. So basically, away from your body, towards you, you fall down with all your weight, obviously with two hands because you're not holding a camera at the same time, and then you push it downwards and the other person takes up the slack. Or if you do it by yourself, you can kind of like do a couple of turns and then hold it down and like take up with your other hand. Maria usually does all of this by herself. Uh, I'm still in the learning stage of that. Not sure if I ever will be able to do that, but uh, what else? You may have seen us on the last video when we had our little off-course cruise. Uh, we have the anchor on deck now, underway. I think it's about 150, 160 pounds. Um, and usually it sits out here in the course pipe, somewhere down below. But we don't want it to be dragging around in the water because it's uh, 
taking away a lot of speed, so we pulled it up on the deck. And there is a, a kind of funny story when we left today. First of all, when we checked out of Tumaco, you need an agent in Colombia, and the agent charges here in Tumaco $200, basically for nothing. He didn't really do anything. Like when we arrived, they're like, oh, you gotta go to immigration, people need to be stamped out. I'm like, they're flying out. Like our crew, they're flying out by plane. I'm like, they don't need any stamps. Okay, but then uh, they still need to go to the immigration office. So we all went there and then the lady from immigration was like, what the hell are you doing here? I'm like, well, I kind of told them the same because we don't really need any stamps right now. So she stamped us out, whereas we were like leaving in three days, so. <laughs> And then she's like, what? I thought you were leaving now. What are you actually doing here? I'm like, well, we're just here because the agent told us to be here. So that was a big confusion. And then when we came to pick up our Zarpi, our international Zarpi, to go from Tumaco to Bahia, Caracas in Ecuador, I look at the crew list and first of all, our names are spelled wrong, which is okay, fair enough. But then it said nationality for both Maria and I, Canadian. Whereas Maria was on her um, American passport and I'm obviously German. And uh, so I say to him, uh, well, do these both nationalities are wrong, right? Like she's, she's American and I'm German. He's like, ah, that's not so important. I'm like, how can this not be important? It's like the nationality of you. Like if we come to Ecuador and they go like, oh, where are your passports? And I show them a different passport than the nationality of my crew list. I don't know if that's so cool, really. Well, so it took another day for him to change that. And um, <laughs> then we take up anchor. We were anchored like right next to the Guadacosta and the military base. So we take up anchor and I just showed you that the anchor's up on deck. So we have like a little lifting thing with a, a rope and tackle that you have to pull the anchor all the way up and like lift it over the rail and then put it onto the deck. So we had just finished that. And then the Guada Costa comes by and says, oh, we're coming by, we want to board you a security check. And we're like, um, all right, well, come on by, you know, we're just going to drift. They're like, no, we have divers, the divers need to go down on the boat, so please shut up your engine. You have to anchor and shut up your engine. And I'm like, well, dude, we just put up the anchor, like, couldn't you have come like half an hour earlier? You saw us picking up anchor, they're like, yeah. Well, maybe I wasn't quite that calm, I think I was a little annoyed. Maria said they were a little scared to come on board. <laughs> anyway, so they came and um, they dove down on the hull. They had a, a dog searching the boat as well. And then I'm like, oh, so what are the people doing down at the hull? He's like, oh, they just want to make sure you don't have any holes in your hull. And they want to make sure that your prop is all clear. I'm like, yeah, right. Like what they're really doing, obviously, is looking at somebody has secretly tied massive packs of cocaine to our hull, which luckily wasn't the case. And um, after a small interrogation, it seemed more like personal interest rather than really like formal investigation. Uh, we were good to go and picked up anchor once again.